Today, everybody, today we're gonna learn how to manipulate images and how to animate them using Blender and GIMP. For this tutorial, we will use this image, which you can get online or directly from our database at movementpictures.weebly.com. Our goal is to cut out the honorable man shaking Einstein's hand on the right side of the image and substitute him with another character. Go ahead and download the file to Handshaking Original, which we will soon recklessly take apart. Open up GIMP and load in the acquired file as shown. In order to change the photograph appropriately, we will have to create a background layer. First duplicate the layer. Then, using control mouse wheel, we zoom in on the image, select the clone tool and create a reasonable background by copy-pasting the pipes of the organ. Keep in mind that you can clone whole sections also and paint them along a line whilst holding down shift. Point A of the painting line is the point of your last left mouse click. Point B will be determined by your consecutive click. The copied part is the same line with the same angle from the selected copy point. Next we're gonna clone those trousers by selecting them, pacing them a bit to the side and transforming these until it all looks realistic. Using the flip tool, we mirror it on the x-axis. We position it appropriately. And after merging the layers together, right clicking on a new layer and selecting new layer on the drop down menu, we go ahead and clone some of the surrounding pixels. Once we've done all these steps, you should have a background layer something like this. Now we will cut out some hands and the paper roll, so we have some possible interactions for the upcoming animation part. Go ahead and select the path tool and follow along the outline of the paper roll. Connect the last point with the starting point by selecting it and dragging it over to the first. Now that the path is closed, press Shift V to make a selection along the path. Press Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste your selection. Head over to the layers window and make the copied selection a new layer with transparency. We will use the cutout paper to obstruct the view on the remainder of the code. So go ahead now and enlarge it to your liking. That'll do. Keep in mind though to leave it on its own separate layer. Our last duty here is to cut out Einstein's right hand using the path tool and making the copy its own separate layer again. Go ahead and export the layers separately. Usually all visible layers will be exported, so toggle only these visible which you do want to export. Our file tab is PNG because it can save transparency channels and it is quite lossless in quality means. Hey voila, high time to head over to Blender now. So open up Blender with the default scene and configure scene as shown. First we realign the camera, press Alt G to clear its position, 
Alt R to clear its rotation. Move it a bit to the side along the Y axis by pressing G and then Y. Now we delete the default cube. Press Shift S to center your 3D cursor and add a new plane by pressing Shift A and selecting the plane from the menu. In order to render the same image resolution, we need to size our camera to the same values. Go to your background image file and search for the image resolution as shown. Select your camera and change its values so they align with the image. Press 0 to jump into your camera view and size the plane so it fits the boundaries. Select the plane and add a shadeless material with the background image as a texture to it. UV and wrap the plane in edit mode by pressing U and wrap. Apply the UV coordinates in the texture mode. And bam, there's the image as a background plane when rendered. In order to make the image visible in the 3D viewport, change the display type to textured and on the shading select GLSL. If we want to position our new character approximately correct, we best create a relation cube to make our miserable blender life easier and to simulate the photographer's position in 3D space. Simply align it to the original stage that we see on the image. Now load in the astronaut and try to position him so it looks right and well related. We move him down the C-axis, rotate him minus 90 degree and after jumping to orthographic side view we rotate him so he's along the normal of our cube. Adjust our astronaut to your liking. It's best to move him along his local axis to keep him oriented perpendicular to the surface. You do so by pressing X, Y, C twice after pressing G for grabbing or moving him. Now we need to pose him. Switch to pose mode and pose his arms as you want them. You can use your 3D cursor as the pivot point, as I do if you want. The IK hands are on the layers 8 and 11 of the rig. Also move the torso bone a bit down along the C axis if you want. Now that you've positioned your character, we have to see into the lighting relations of our scene and the photograph. First switch from texture mode to solid, which makes things easier and runs smoother as your PC has less to compute. Add a new sound lamp or change the existing lamp to sun. Move it up and rotate it a bit. You can also change its emitted color. I'm using a light grey and decrease its strength. We only want to render the astronaut, so change the output file to PNG and select RGBA 
which has an alpha channel applied to. Also switch off sky and the scene style. In the header toggle off the render button of the background plane and the relation surface. Select ambient occlusion and environment lighting to improve your render. Environment lighting is best as we are working on an outdoor scene. Now that only the astronaut is renderable, go ahead and hit that nasty F12 button and render the image. Jump back to GIMP and cut out Einstein. Also cut out part of the table in front. After cutting out Einstein, don't forget to extend his coat. Having Einstein on a separate layer, extend the background around the silhouette. Here you can see my result. Now we will load in the astronaut using drag and drop again. You can still move your character. You can also scale him. I scaled the paper roll a bit and extended it via the clone tool. Be sure to have the layers on the right in a good order. Also make the floor a separate layer or erase your character's feet a bit. Once everything is adjusted, we jump ahead and change our character to black and white. Also consider blurring your character and then adding some noise so it looks appropriately old. Experiment with the values until you get a good result. To add up to the image relations, I changed the contrast and the brightness too. Now toggle off all layers besides Einstein and your character plus the paper roll. And export these all together as a single PNG image with transparency. Also export the table part that we cut out before as a single image. This was our final step in GIMP. Open up a new scene in Blender and add the planes as shown to build your scene. Of course we keep the image resolutions as before. Name all materials so you can distinguish them from each other. They are all going to be shadeless again. After you apply the first image to your plane, switch to texture mode with TLSL shading enabled. Duplicate the plane and add another material, after moving it a bit closer to your camera.
clicking the two next to your material name, recreate the same material, only duplicate it. Go ahead and change its name and the texture. Enable transparency in both the materials and textures tab as shown. Now duplicate the plane one more time and add in the table. You can hit render now to see Einstein and the astronaut shaking hands. Finally, we get to the fun part of animating our image with the lattice modifier. Select your Einstein astronaut layer and press Shift H to hide all other planes and non-selected objects. You will see those two characters flying in your 3D space now. If so, all is well. Press Shift A to add in the lattice and overlay it with the character plane. Change the values as shown. The more points you have, the better, as we have a more precise way of moving our pixels. Because what the lattice will do is that it will let us move and animate points of the image using shape keys. Select your image plane and add the lattice modifier with our lattice in the object input. Also subdivide the image a few times, so that the lattice has something to work with. Now select the lattice itself and add a basis shape key. Add another shape key and call it handshake or whatever you intend to do with your characters. The basis shape key will be the start point of the animation. The second shape key is your move that you want your characters to perform. With the selected lattice go into edit mode and having your handshake shape key selected on the right, start transforming your image with the lattice points. It's recommended to use proportional editing and also to use your 3D cursor as your pivot point. Now that you've got your shape keys ready, we open up the dope sheet window and animate our scene, which is super easy. With your mouse cursor floating over the shape key influence value, press I to insert a keyframe at the zero point of your timeline. Jump a bit forward and add in another keyframe with an influence value of 1. At the very end, I put in the zero value keyframe again, so it plays back. You can still change your shape keys to improve the animation, even if you already put the keyframes. Press Alt H to unhide all objects and review your work through the camera. To export your animation select AVI RAW or any other container file type and hit animate. It shouldn't take long to compute at all. Name the file properly, of course, so you can find it.
this way we conclude our tutorial. I am the Moon Man, wishing you a moonacious time. Goodbye.